So I want to talk to you guys about some ideas that people may get a little bit confused about with trying to work on relationship first with horses. Um, and what, it has to do with asking them things and, 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 allowing them, and allowing them to have a voice and allowing them to say no. And I hear people say things like, well, if, you, if they're allowed to say no, how do you ever get them to do anything? And I, I'll get into that in this clip here, which is actually the, the training situation I'm going to show you is, is getting a horse into the water at the beach for the first time. It's our stallion ray, but I'm going to talk about the process behind it. That's just the, you know, that's just happened, the incident that I, it's, it's about. But so people, you know, they, they say, if you, if you allow them to say no, how do you ever get them to say yes? And the other thing is, they say if you're only because i'm big on, on saying only ask yes questions and they say if you only ask yes questions how do you how do you ever get anything done so it's kind of the same thing is like you know how, how do you ever get anything done and the thing about only asking yes questions i think there's three types of yes questions so questions you can get a yes to okay these are not questions you get a no to but a question questions you get a yes to number one is something they already know how to do that's that one's pretty simple that's when your horse is trained to do the thing they've been exposed to it they're comfortable with it they're confident with it that's a yes question uh, the second yes question would be when they know how to do it as listed above right then and they are in the mental and physical state to be able to do it right now, today, at this very moment. And that's where you see a lot of people have trouble. Is like, he could do it yesterday, why won't he do it today? Okay, so what's happening there is you're asking a no question on that day. Yesterday was a yes question, today it's not, and we're not actually reading the horse. So those are the two, two of the types of yes questions. But the third one, and this is one's the one that's used the most in training, is when they don't know the answer to the question, but they can figure it out, or you can get through it, get through to the answer with the information you have provided. Okay, and that's where most training happens. You know, the next step in your training process is just all the information they've learned so far, just a little plus, just a little bit more, and they figure it out from here. But they figure it out because it's the next step, and it's you know when when you, if you train well, you're not making huge changes. You know one of the principles of training is change one thing at a time. And so you're only going to be changing um, little things, but it is something they don't know how to do. So the example I'm going to use in this video is today we went to the beach, took the horses to the beach, and Robin was riding old Oscar, who's been you know to the beach and in the water before, and I was riding Ray. And so Ray's a probably a seven-year-old stallion by now, I guess. We've had him a couple of years, and he had a lack of confidence in people when we first got him. You know, he's a very well-trained horse, and as long as he was doing what he was told, he was he was good. But you know, any situation to where he was unsure of the answer or things like that, he get he could get kind of worried. Um, and he could also there were some th things, and there weren't very many things, but there were some things he could spook out when he when he spooked. He was spooking. There was no way you could communicate with him in that instance. He was not listening, wasn't going to listen. So there's no use trying to control that. And it didn't happen a lot, but it was there enough for me to know it was there. And for me, we didn't have enough connection. He didn't have enough trust in me for me to be able to help him through that spot. Okay, And that's relevant because today I did. So I'm going to go through the this, this steps here. One of my lights just went out. I'm going to go through the steps here so that went to the beach today for the, <coughs> excuse me, he, Ray went a year ago and when he went last year, Orbit was right on the sand. So up on the sand, not try to go anywhere near the water. And so today I, we rode down the sand and I rode as far away from the water as I was the furthest horse away from the water. So we walked along the beach. There was Robin and myself and a friend of ours who, Joanna, who was also ponying a horse as well. So there was, you know, there's three horses between him and the water. And once he got comfortable with that, then I got to where I could walk him along by the water. He definitely wasn't going to let it near him come near him, but he got confident walking along by the water. Then the next step, I found a spot to where the water would go out quite a bit and then come in and come a little bit closer each time. And I got him to where, uh, the first time, well, here's, the, here's where you've got to allow the no. So the first time I... I stood there and that water came towards him and it was just towards him, it wasn't going over his feet or anything. 
he did a big old U-turn, like, wow, wheeled around and, you know, headed up the sand sort of thing. And I just, I just let him do it and I just peeled him back around and pointed him back in the same spot again. Like, yeah, no big deal. It, it, it was, I know it was scary, but there's no reason to get uptight about it. So I didn't get uptight about it. I didn't try to prevent him from leaving then. When he needs to leave, he needs to leave. Okay, if it's that scary to him, okay, I'm going to come with you. That's a part of your confidence building with your horse too. That's a part of the connection. You're, you know, initially you create connection from the very beginning, but then as you go along in your training, how you approach each situation either adds or creates connection. And in that situation with this particular horse, allowing him to make say no and make that U-turn is part of how we get to the end so quickly. Okay, and so I did that a few times. I would just kind of point him there at the water and it would start coming in. Now, I didn't point him anywhere he didn't want to go. He was quite comfortable to go to that spot. Okay, so I'm not egging him on. He's not trying to suck back. He's quite happy to go to that spot and stand there. But then, you know, every once in a while, a wave will come in that comes a bit closer and he would do a U-turn. But he only did a few U-turns before he didn't do U-turns anymore. And that's the thing is people say, well, if you let him say no, how do you ever get anything done? If you let him say no to something often enough, which means they have control over it. After a while, they're like, well, I have control over it. So I'm fine with it now. So they're, they're, they're good with it because they have control over it. You would think it'd be the opposite. You'd think that you'd teach the horse to spook at something by allowing them to spook at it over and over and over. But actually, they get less spooky. If you've ever put an object out in an arena, like a tire or a tarp on the ground or whatever, and turn a horse loose out there, a lot of times they will spook and run away. And then spook and run away and then spook a little less and then run away. And then they'll come over and then they'll start sniffing. They've got to have those spooks. And so I allowed Ray to do that a few times. And it wasn't very many times before. Then what could happen is I could be standing there facing the water and the water would actually come up and slosh on his feet. And then he might turn and leave, but at least he's felt that slosh on his feet. Okay, and after a while he could stand there and the water could, could come sloshing up there. And so all this has pretty much been voluntary pretty much up until this point in time. And now comes the point where your connection and your training intersect, okay? This horse responds very well to my hand and very well to my leg. So I can control this horse quite well. I don't think he has any more control on him now than he did when we first got him. So it's not like I've trained him to death or something, brother. But the thing is, what I did was I walked, walked along parallel to the waves and when they went to come up and he went to leave, I stopped him with my hand and leg. I blocked him with his leg and I blocked him with my hand and I said, no, you've got to stay here. And that water would swoosh past him and then he'd be like, oh, okay, I'm fine. And so, you know, he was wanting to leave. So this is, this is where you get into the gray area to where you're actually not allowing them to say no, but you've got to save that for when you know they're going to come out the other side of it and go, oh, what was I thinking? It's no big deal. You can't overexpose them and you've got to have it, you've got to have a lot of trust right there. And like I said, a couple of years ago when we first bought him and he would spook at certain things, there was no way you could control him in that spook. Like he was like petrified, checking out there. He wasn't looking to the human for support. And so any support offered was completely rejected anyway. But now when he went to leave, you know, the first time today that I had him stay there when that wave came in, he went to leave and I could make him stay there and then the wave came and he's like, oh, okay, that's no big deal. And off he wandered. And so, you know, if you think about the, the two questions I said I was going to answer in this video from the start, people said, if, if you let him say no, how do you ever get him to say yes? And how do you ask him to do things, you know, how do you go to the next step as far as if you're asking a no question, you're asking a yes question, but they don't know how to do that next step. Usually in your training, they can figure it out because it's very closely related to it. But in this case, the very next step with this particular horse was the fact that he was very good about my hand and very good about my leg. So he's very well trained and he trusted me enough that when that scary thing was coming, I said, stay, he could stay. Two years ago, he couldn't have stayed. He'd have been the hell out of there. And then he would have been a little bit concerned about my judgment for trying to make him stay there in the first place. So this is when it's getting to the, you know, the nitty gritty of it, the, it depends state where, you, you know, halfway between the connection and the training when these things start to overlap, there is no, yes, do this, don't do this. It's like, when can you, 
you know, push them through their comfort zones just a little bit when they are very responsive to the aid that you're asking with and they're very confident in you and have a lot of connection and a lot of trust in you and the thing that you're making them do, on the other side of it, they kind of go, oh, okay, that's fine. Okay, and this is, I, I, I'd say I really am pushing a horse through something like this, but I'd say this, I'm not, no, I'm not necessarily pushing him through it, I'm just not letting him leave. I'm not making him go towards the wave. That's the other thing too, is I'm not, I'm not making him go towards something that he doesn't want to go towards. I'm just pausing his flight so he can experience and then go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I, I can do this. This is, this is not that bothersome, I just thought it was. So that might be a lot to think about there, but I wanted to share the because I do get those two questions a lot, and I'd like to be able to refer people back to this video when they have questions like that. And also people ask about, you know, getting horses in water at the beach. So the big thing, if you want to think about the beach, the first time he saw the waves, I didn't try to get him in the water. That was a year ago. He hasn't been to the beach for a year. So he's been there before and had no pressure put on him. If you take your horse to the beach for the first time and they're scared of the water and the first thing you're doing is kicking a whip and trying to make them get in the water, there's going to be a like, I've never been to an area like this before and when I come to this place I get whipped and kicked sort of thing. Um, so he had a pleasant experience there first and then, <coughs> excuse me, we've built up enough trust where I could actually start to work on things. But if you think about the first thing I allowed him to do, I allowed him to say no. When he wheeled and ran around when that water came, I just went with him and then just directed him back around, just pointed back towards the waves like, oh, it's no big deal. It didn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. So that was the next step. Then the next step that, you know, those waves got a bit closer and he felt it. And then the next step was I was moving, but I was moving parallel to the water. I wasn't trying to make him walk in the water. I was moving parallel to the water. And when the water came to him, I just stopped him from leaving and let that water kind of wash over him while he was moving. But at no point in time did I did actually walk him into the water. The water came to him in every situation. So, you know. And he, he'd get a bit dizzy, you know, when the water goes out, they, they get a bit dizzy and I'm getting over COVID right now, so I'm a bit dizzy too. And, and um, I think we're both a little bit dizzy when that water would go out there. But anyway, I haven't walked him straight into the water yet. That would be for next time. But I was so happy with how we handled the whole thing today. And he just, it just goes to show that, you know, not that you're going to see it from the videos because you never saw him freak out and run away before. But two years ago, when he freaked out and ran away, you had to there was no way you could say you can't leave right now. And so that's a big deal. He's gotten a lot more um, confidence and trust in me in the last couple of years. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Hope that it clears up some questions that people have had.